Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. I'll tell you what ladies and gentlemen, I visit this site every day and that's Natural News. And the gentleman that runs that site, Mike Adams, he's a scientist and he's a patriot and he's a really good person. He's one of the first people that got ousted from YouTube because he likes to speak the truth. And I just happened to come across this article that he wrote on some scientific work that he undertook in seeing what type of water filters would be able to block out any radioactive materials and at what percentage level they would be able to block it out. I am very pleasantly surprised because the water filter that did the best job, one of two that did the best job, is one that pretty much anyone can afford and it's one that I've talked about in the past and that I have actually reviewed here on this channel. But first I want to go ahead and talk to you a little bit about what water levels are safe, what PPM water levels are safe to drink. A lot of people say that, well, reverse osmosis filtration is not good for you because it takes everything out of the water and I agree and I learned that the hard way right because I was having issues with electrolytes when I went on this carnivore diet and I was drinking only RO water which has nothing in it so it was stripping my body of all of these minerals and nutrients that my body needed without me even knowing it thinking I was doing something good so if you are drinking some kind of a reverse osmosis water then in my opinion, because I'm not a doctor or a medical professional or a scientist like Mr. Adams is, you will be just fine if you're eating a regular diet, right? If you're eating three times a day, if you're eating snacks, if you're taking in all of those electrolytes that you take in when you eat, you'll be just fine. But if you're in some kind of a restrictive diet where you're cutting out carbohydrates, where you're just not getting those electrolytes because you're maybe uh, doing a diet where you're eliminating things, elimination diet, then maybe you may want to look into adding a little bit of electrolytes to your water if you have RO. If we ever had some kind of a nuclear exchange and there was radioactivity in the water, what water filters can we count on that we can actually stock up at a decent price to be able to replace the filters every so many gallons? Because you see, let's say for example that a Berkey water filter, which is one of the ones that was tested here in this experiment, let's say Berkey water filters filters out all of the radioactive particulates in water, right? Because the water is not what gets radioactive radioactive it's the particulates within the water that become radioactive and are suspended in it but you're looking at spending I think it's like $150 or something like that for a couple of Berkey water filters, you know, the black ones. Those will filter out, and we'll see how much they filter out here in a second. But those will filter out most, but not all, of the radioactive particulates in water. But once you've used those so many times, how are you going to clean them if they are now radioactive? We tested 28 water filters in the lab for their ability to remove cesium. And these six outperformed all the rest. Well, let's take a look and see what those six are, but let's read on a little bit. All right, so starting off with cesium, which is a radioactive material, cesium-137 is the most dangerous contaminant following a nuclear event. Cesium-137 persists in the environment for nearly three centuries, contaminating soils, waterways, and the food supply animal milk in particular, ladies and gentlemen, with a radioactive substance that mimics the metabolic pathways of potassium. And it's why I've always said that you should always have a reverse osmosis system in your home, right? Or a filtration system that will take out everything and then you can just add those nutrients or minerals back. But that's just me thinking out loud, ladies and gentlemen. Why? Because you just never know. Even if you have a well, if you don't have that water tested on a regular basis, you really don't know what's in that water. And even if you have a water tested, let's say you do a water test on your well every month. What happens in between that month? What if something bad happens that you don't know about in between tests? And then you're drinking that water for, I don't know, a week, two weeks, three weeks, or a whole month before you take another test. And that's if you do it every month, which I would say most people don't. And here he continues to say that exposure to cesium can increase the risk of cancer. Uh, removing cesium from contaminated water is critical for survival in a post-fallout scenario. The water is not radioactive. It is the contaminants that are in the water that are. So it says, please understand that water which is radioactive is merely contaminated with radioactive particles. The water itself is not radioactive. It is the things in the water, such as the cesium part particles or particulates. 
And uh, before we go ahead and do the testing, I just wanted to show you uh, how it is that uh, the PPMs, the parts per millions of total dissolved solids in the water is rated as to what is safe to drink and what is not. That way, when you go out and price a water filter, let's say if it's a reverse osmosis water filter, which is my favorite to have, all right? When you go price it out, you can ask yourself, okay, how much is a bottle of water? What's the cheapest bottle of water that you can think of right now? Me, it's the little bottle of waters at Costco that they have in their vending machines that are like 25 cents each, and I think they're like 16.9 ounces, or 16 ounces, let's say, 25 cents per. And that's how I gauge, am I getting a good price for this water filtration system that's giving me X number of gallons of pure water, pretty much, you know, the purest that you can get without distilling for this X number of pennies per gallon. So you can say, well, yeah, this is a pretty good deal because some filtration systems, they seem that they're kind of expensive. But when you break it down to the bare bones, to how much is it that you really are paying for water? If you go out there and buy a bottle of water for $3.99 because you're on a trip somewhere and you didn't bring a water with you, you could have very likely paid for what it would have cost you to filter all of the drinking water and cooking water that you would use in a month had you invested in a reverse osmosis system or a pitcher system that is kind of like reverse osmosis that cleans everything out of your water. So it's all in perspective to how much are you really spending on water and is it worth you spending that money to ensure that you're drinking good potable water. And ladies and gentlemen, all I did was just a simple Google search for safe PPM and drinking water, right? And the particulates per million are parts per million, right, of total dissolved solids, right? So 30 to 400 ppm is says it's what is normal for tap water, which I can attest to that because the water that I get, that's my tap water, ranges between about 150 and 200 ppm. And this is what they say that is safe to drink. But whenever I do taste that water every once in a while, just to reassure myself that, yeah, this water is not really all that great to drink, even at 170 ppm, I can still taste the chlorine right and whenever i put it through my reverse osmosis system i don't taste anything now it says here concentrations less than 100 ppm are desirable for domestic water supplies the recommended range for drinking water is 30 to 400 ppm a minimum level of al alkalinity is desirable because it is considered a buffer that prevents large variations in ph alkalinity is not detrimental to humans and that's why i say that i like to go ahead and put a little bit of electrolyte powder into my reverse osmosis water because it balances everything out and then you can go on here google this yourself and do your own homework ladies and gentlemen that way you yourselves can convince yourself of what levels are safe for you now going back to the test ladies and gentlemen here they say that for our testing we acquired the stable form of cesium which is cesium 133 we did not use radioactive cesium for our testing because that would be stupid and illegal he says uh, you can however purchase stable isotopes uh, at, such as cesium-133 on Amazon.com. Boiling water does not remove cesium-137 because it is an element and cannot be killed by boiling. Adding iodine, listen ladies and gentlemen, right, because this is important. Adding iodine, chlorine, chlorine dioxide, or other sanitizing chemicals to water does not remove cesium either. It's not a bacteria. Right? The original cesium-137 is still there and it is still emitting radiation due to the laws of physics. In acquiring water filters for our testing, we noticed that some water filters promote as anti-radiation filters and they claim that they specifically remove radioisotopes from water. Here are some of the filters that we tested that did the best and let's go ahead and go down the line. Now here they have a few disclosures and the most important one that I can find here, you can read the rest of the disclosures for yourself. We ran one test per water filter, all right? And uh, consider that this is just a snapshot. So it's not like they ran this test, you know, for months with a whole bunch of times on the same water filter. They ran a test on each water filter to see how it would perform, all right? Consider this a snapshot of what the water filter, but not necessarily representative of every filter across the entire brand. Uh, your mileage may vary, meaning that you may get more gallons out of that water filter or less. And here are the top ones, starting from least to best. 
Crystal drop water filter removed 99.98% of the cesium. That's really good. All right. Uh, Zen stone filter, 99.98%. The big Berkey, ladies and gentlemen, 99.99%. I think that is really good as well. I've never heard of this water filter here, and I'm going to try to, um, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> pronounce it, all right? Cayenne, Cayenne maybe, Cayenne Alkaline Water Filter Water is the name of it, 99.99%. And then here's this one, Aqua Pale, never heard of this one either, 100%, okay, 100%. But the one that I'm excited about is the one that I've reviewed on this channel before, uh, a while back, and in my opinion, it's very affordable and very good to keep for an SHTF water filter. And that's the Zero Water Filter, ladies and gentlemen. The Zero Water Filter is a very affordable water filter that I've reviewed in the past. I think they're like $29, $30 on Amazon for either a pitcher or like a 2 liter or 2 gallon, something like that pitcher. I'll try to put a picture up here next to me. Uh, so it's like $30 or something like that. So I think it's a very affordable one. And the filters themselves are actually very affordable. Uh, I just finished ordering another set of 8 for like $94 or something like that of eight of those filters however these filters are said to last you about 20 gallons or so but i say no i say that you can use them for well over 20 gallons now if it's for water filtration of radioactive i will just keep using that filter until it clogs because it should clog pretty soon right it shouldn't give you a whole bunch of gallons in my opinion if you're filtering out radioactive contaminants so what i would probably do is this i would just take one filter per day and try to get all the water that i need per day out of that one filter or maybe 50 gallons and store it up out of one filter and then get rid of the filter because it's going to be full of radioactive particulates right so that's what i would do with the zero water filter but for the price i think it's a great price now they tell you here if you go to the amazon site they're going to tell you well go ahead and discard it once your ppms get above six or zero zero six right which is six parts per million i think that going all the way to 50 ppms for regular water not for radioactive water is just fine because the water that you buy at the store you know like bottled water you're looking at about 50 ppms for that bottled water right because all they do is they just put it through a filtration system just like anything else it's not really that special of water that you're buying at the store when you're buying your garden variety bottle of water at the store right and overpaying two thousand percent for it uh, but that's what i would do with this filter right here with the zero water filter is just have it for emergencies or you can use it for every day but the key is this make sure that you stock up on those filters on the filter cartridges right and learn how to use them and make sure that you're that you're going to be comfortable with using them in in such a scenario where it's either you know a chemical spill like in ohio right where the water got contaminated or something that is of the nature of uh, nuclear right or radioactive so i just thought that i would show you this today ladies and gentlemen because i think this is a great water filter to have again i know some people have problems with reverse osmosis but it's very simple to take care of the problem of there being nothing in that water and that is just add your own electrolytes to that water now i wanted to cover this really quick because i put out a video yesterday where I showed you the thermocells that I got and the new ones that came out. And a lot of people kept asking, you never left the link, you never left the link. I just thought that people would use my Amazon link, whoever wanted to look on there, because uh, I do have an Amazon link. And uh, yes, it is an affiliate link, ladies and gentlemen. I have an Amazon link, and I figured you could just type in thermocell. But I went into my account, and I went ahead and included in the front of the line the uh, thermocells that I reviewed yesterday on yesterday's video and also those uh, water filters and the zero brand water filtration unit that comes with a filter and a pitcher as well. If you want to take a look at those, I'm going to go ahead and leave my Amazon link on pinned comment. That way it's easy for you to get to. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So I don't always put it on there because I figure it's always a a, a double-edged sword you know if you put the link on there people think oh my god you're only putting this on there to scare us into no i'm not if you want to buy it you buy it if you don't you don't if you want to buy it and not use my link don't buy don't use my link but get it i think it's a great thing to have to have these water filters on standby in case we have some kind of a disaster ask anyone that lives in ohio uh you know in palestine ohio if they have a water filtration in their system now i bet you now they do but how many of them did not have it 
prior to that incident. All right. All right. I probably made this video about a thousand hours long, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for hanging out with me today. I hope that you had a great week and I hope that you have a good weekend coming up ahead. God bless every one of you. God bless America. I'm Alaska Prepper. I'm out.